Welcome to the Inquendor Guitars Workshop and another part in a video series where I show you very in depth how I make one of my electric guitars. Uh, yeah, in the last episode I prepared the top for this guitar. It's a beautiful piece of quilted maple. And in this, in this episode I'm going to tell you all about how I turn this beautiful piece of black limba into the rest of the body. So let's get started. Making a guitar body is fairly easy. The most important parts are having a nice piece of wood, something to cut with. It could be a bandsaw, a jigsaw, uh, a scroll saw, maybe even some hand saws. It really doesn't matter. I am fortunate enough to have a reasonable bandsaw, so I'm going to use my bandsaw. And you need something to clean up the edges after cutting the body out, and that can be uh, a spindle sander, a router table, hand router, and maybe even some sandpaper. I'm going to use, of course, my router table uh, together with my template and a, gu a bearing guided um, router bit. So yeah, let's get started by putting on a center line on our body blank and find out which part of the wood I'm going to use. So, I'm going to grab a pencil and some rulers, get you a little bit closer, and I'll show you my body blank. So here we are with our body blank, and my body blank is a two-piece body blank, and luckily enough I can buy them like this, so yeah, it saves me a lot of time. For my center lines, for my center line for this guitar body, I'm going to use the seam between these two halves, obviously. So I'm going to mark it, because it's very hard to, to see at each end. So here I have my center line on one side, and I'm going to, going to do the same on the other side as well, because there's a small defect in this wood. There are minor cracks or something in the wood. There's a nut here that I want to avoid showing up in the body. I'm going to draw in a line here as well. And get my template. And let's figure out if I can find a way to avoid this defect. Yeah, it's possible to avoid it when I place my template like this, but that will mean that this is the front of the guitar and my template is meant to be put on the back so I can route the cavity uh, for the control straight away. And, and I want this to be the back of my guitar. Uh, if there's any defects um, yeah, deeper inside of the wood, I'm sure it will end up in the back and at the belly carve and I can carve it away. So I'm going to switch over my template. And this should be good as well. And we've got a nice grain pattern for the back of the guitar as well. Yeah, the front is more plain. Align the center line of your template with the center line drawn in on the body blank, of course. And so this will be the back of the guitar. Let's draw a line around it. And here we have it, the back of our guitar. Let's check the front. Yeah, most of it will be invisible, of course. Oh. Most of this wood won't show up um, yeah, because of the top, of course. So the back is more important. 
Yeah, avoid it. This defect. Nice coloring on the back. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah, let's go to the band saw and cut it out already. Yeah, it has been a bit of a struggle with my bandsaw. It kept jamming up and, 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 and wandering all over the place. So yeah, there's something wrong with it. I don't know what. I just kept going. Wasted a bit of wood, but yeah, yeah, I've got a cut out shape now. So I have to take this apart one of these days and see what's wrong with it. But right there, we have nearly a good guitar shape. Time to put on the template and do some routing. And of course, I'm going to stick on the template with masking tape and super glue. Yeah, and I'm going to stick the template to the back of the guitar and it gives me the opportunity to straight away uh, route and make the control cavity uh, yeah, without having to redo and replace the template. So it's nice and secure now. Yeah, it is. Hard to get a grip on it, but you can see it's secure. And now I can use my router tile. And now I can use my router table to carefully clean up these edges. So yeah, I have to change the route a bit, and I'll be it back in just a moment. real quick about using the router table uh, because I think it's very important there's a lot of things that can go wrong um, if used improperly uh, so first of all of course after applying your template make sure it's absolutely secure it won't move because there's nothing uh, worse than having your template come off during routing and I like to use a somewhat larger router bit I'm using a 16 millimeter router bit so it's almost half an inch uh, with a bearing on the shaft side and I slow down my router just slightly I have a Triton router and I set it to the fourth setting it goes up to five and I switch it back to four so if you have a router that's capable of adjusting the RPM yeah, turn it down a bit uh, slow it down and it gives you a much easier um, cut I uh, experienced uh, you can take your time you can just take slow uh, shallow passes and you won't get any burn marks from the router, uh, router bit spinning at the same spot uh, too long and that will get you burn marks. Uh, then when routing of course take shallow passes against the rotation so my router rotates uh, for me anti-clockwise so I push it in from the right against the rotation direct, uh, direction of the router bit. Uh, of course I take shallow passes but as soon as my bearing can touch my template I keep applying an equal amount of pressure on my workpiece and piece on the my work piece and the router bit all the time especially when nearing these sharp corners I keep my hands out of the way of the router so it's preferably behind the router bit or otherwise on a section I know if I slip my hand won't get anywhere near the router bit so most of the time I like to put my hands somewhat on top if the router bit catches my workpiece goes flying off my hands are still in the same place so my hands won't get dragged along with the workpiece or something like that yeah when nearing corners keep applying 
an equal amount of pressure and guide your workpiece uh, around the corner with pressure at the bearing all the time. So don't get scared and don't apply any pressure as soon as you let the pressure go somewhat there's a chance especially near end grain your router bit will catch. So keep pressure on your router and guide it along the router all times just like this I hope you can see it. Um, I start at a section I know where my bearing is touching my template so it won't catch at the start. I guide it along Keep pressure on it, guide my workpiece around the corner, keep pressure on it and yeah, keep contact with my router bit at all times. So pull it, slide it across, keep pressure, keep pressure and then start pushing it. So there's uh, contact with my workpiece uh, at all time. Because as soon as I hesitate and I let go of the pressure and um, slide it back against my router bit again, yeah, it will most likely catch uh, yeah, and you get all kinds of tear outs and such. So keep pressure on it, it's very important. I can't repeat this enough. Go around the corner and keep contact between your bearing and your router bit and your workpiece at all times. And then you should be fine to route out the entire circumference of your body. If you have any questions about using a router table, if I didn't make myself clear, um, you're still scared of your router table, understandably. Um, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on using a router table and things you can and cannot do with a router table. I love my router table, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I use it as much as possible. I'd rather use my router table than a handheld router. I'm scared of a handheld router. Um, so yeah, let me know if you like a more in-depth tutorial on using the router table in particular. At this point, I've routed along the entire circumference of my body. It's nice and flush, um, but yeah, my router bit isn't long enough, so I have to raise it just a little because I, oh, I have to raise my router bit a little and I don't want to remove my template because I still need it to route the back um, control cavity. I'm going to raise my router bit a little, uh, route the rest of my uh, route the rest of the body, and I'll be right back. So the next step for me is to route the control cavity. My template is already in place, so why not do it straight away? Um, you can always do it later; it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I've got my template made in such a way I can do it straight away, and I only have to stick my template to the body once. And to Route the control cavity, I'm going to make use of these copy rings. Um, for the Triton router, you can get, I think they're uh, 80, 90 bucks a set of copy rings, which you can mount at the bottom of your router. And this allows you to follow along a template uh, with a router bit that doesn't have a bearing of its own. Um, you have to take the diameter difference between your router bit and of course the copy ring into consideration but you can also make use of this the first pass i'm going to route is a very shallow pass using the smallest copy ring i have and a quarter inch uh, router bit and i'm going to route it only two to three millimeters deep to allow for the cover plate so the thickness of the cover plate for your control cavity uh, the second pass I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same router bit, but I'm going to use a very large, one of the largest copy rings. And this creates an offset for the same router bit. I'm still going to use the quarter inch router bit. Um, and I get a little latch uh, yeah, for my control cover plate. So, it doesn't matter if it isn't clean straight away because we're going to remove the rest anyway. But this is our first 
passed. So now we have a nice route, approximately three millimeters deep. Uh, the same, uh, slightly deeper than my uh, cover plate is going to be. But I still need some sanding to do, so that be, will be fine. Now I'm going to switch to a larger diameter copy ring to create an offset for the rest of the cavity. Switching copy rings is fairly easy. Just undo the two screws or loosen them a bit on the bottom of your router. Water turn, remove your copy ring and put in the new size. I had already changed it. So I can put it back. And also I chose to use a even smaller router bit for this cut. I'm using an eighth of an inch router bit now. And this gives me just a bigger offset um, for the latch for the, con uh, for the control cover. Let's route this one and you can see exactly what I mean um, with the offset I've, I've created. This is what I've routed this far. As you can see, I've got my recess for the cover plate and I've got the outline for the rest of the cavity. And I didn't need to remove everything with this with the small router bit because I'm going to use a Fosner bit and my drill press to remove most of the waste. And I can follow this new created edge with just a regular router bit uh, with a bearing uh, to clean up that edge again. So let's get over to the drill press and remove all this waste. So we're at the drill press and I'm going to use Fosner bits uh, to remove most of this waste material. It's the easiest way, fastest way to do it. Um, when buying Fosner bits, buy the best quality you can find um, or can afford in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of rubbish out there, there are these cheap sets of Fosner bits. And they dull real easy. They, the edges tend to burn, and yeah, they won't give you a nice and clean result. Um, yeah, some brands I can recommend, of course, Famach, made in Germany, a very good brand. Um, and I use another German brand called uh, Alpen or Alpen, and yeah, that's uh, supplied by my local uh, do-it-yourself uh, store. A big German brand store. Very good for the bits. Uh, I also tried uh, a cheaper one uh, made by Wolfcraft. They're okay, but they won't last as long uh, as the Alpen or the Famach bits. So they're reasonable, but yeah, if you can afford them and they're not that much uh, more expensive. Uh, by Famach or Alpen bits. So I've already set one up in my drill press and I'm going to just poke a lot of holes to remove as much of the wear material as possible. Very straightforward job, very easy. <laughs> it's one of the jobs I like to do. And because I'm going to glue a top to this guitar body, or into this guitar body to be exact, I can just drill all the way through. So I'm going to create a big hole uh, for the, where the controls are going to be, and the thickness of my top will be enough uh, for the potentiometers, the pots, and all the controls. If you don't going to apply a top to your guitar body, of course, you have to set the depth on your drill press and leave approximately 8-7 mils of thickness of your body material uh, yeah, on the top. So don't create these holes if you, don't, uh, uh, if you aren't applying a top to your body or if your top is already glued on. So then make sure not to drill all the way through. I can do it because later on I'm going to apply a top. 
Ciao. Yeah. So I'm cleaning the inside of the cavity a bit, remove some, some of the fuss uh, left by the route a bit where I did the several passes. And yeah, it's not really necessary, but it's just one of these details. Uh, yeah, nice and smooth. So yeah, that's our control cavity done and yeah, well done and dusty <laughs> in this case. Uh, so I don't have to worry about this anymore. Nice clean route, clean cut. Easy job, I didn't, I think all in all it didn't take a half an hour to do. So that's done. And now I can focus on doing the inlay top. But first, I'm going to grab myself a cup of coffee. So I'm back. And the next step is to create the cavity in the main guitar body for this beautiful top. And to help me I created a couple of templates. Of course I've got my template for the guitar top itself. And I've got a matching template to create the cavity. And this is a yeah, negative space template or whatever you call it. And it is a two part template or it has two layers one uh, side is the actual size i need for my copy rings to create a cavity and at the other side so the underside is the main outline of the guitar body and this way i can put it on the guitar body and it's always nice and centered so it's an exact match the underside is an exact match with the guitar body. It fits real snug, as you can see. And now I can use my handheld router and a copy ring to create the cavity. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm all set to go. I've set up the router, I've set up the depth stop to the thickness of the top, some dust extraction. And yeah, a correct copy ring and I'm using uh, an offcut of making this template on the inside to keep my router nice and stable. So I'm always very nervous doing this because if I slip once with the router I have a big problem. So yeah, fingers crossed and here we go. While I was routing the top cavity and although I had precautions with the extra support templates and such, my router managed to slip <laughs> in one spot and that made, it that made me think about a better solution. And then I spotted this part of my router or planing sled in, in the corner of my shed and I thought why not try and use this and this works great, it's just a couple of pieces of aluminum and this supports my router all the way it's, it rests on the template and now I can route the entire cavity uh, yeah, back and forth uh, without having to worry about router slipping. Of course I have to take care it doesn't uh, slide over the edge of the template but for the most part uh, I should be fine and I still can use my copy ring so I'm sure I won't hit the nicely rounded edges of the cavity. So. So most of the times you come up with better solutions while you're working and although I have done this a dozen of times now, yeah, you still come up with better ways of doing things and that's the fun thing about having luthery or woodworking in general as a hobby, maybe for most hobbies uh, involving creating things, you always come up with a better solution of doing things. 
if you have an even better solution uh, without CNC of course because CNC would be the absolute best option uh, yeah if you have a suggestion on how I how you would tackle such a job yeah let me know in the comment section down below I'm curious to know and I, yeah, like you guys I like to learn as well so let me finish this up and I'll come back to you when it's time to inlay the top all right it's getting very very hot here in the workshop today um, it's very nice weather outside um, there's studio lights the router the dust extraction all generate heat yeah it's getting very hot um, but yeah I'm done routing the cavity so I can remove the template I don't need it anymore today and here is our nice cavity routed well nice I still have some cleaning up to do I'm going to use some cabinet scrapers and some maybe some chisels um, to clean up the bottom and I the router slipped in three spots two of those I'm not worried about they will fill up with glue and we'll never see them again and they don't have any impact on the quality of the guitar whatsoever uh, maybe I use a, a little bit of dust to fill them in, to fill them out I'm pretty happy so let me get some cabinet scrapers and some chisels clean this up and let's fit the top now I've clamped the body to the workbench somewhat and I'm going to use my cabinet scrapers um, to tidy up the bottom and the edges some more yeah cabinet scraper uh, a very valuable tool very simple tool just a piece of stainless steel I've got two different thicknesses and I've got them all prepared and to sharpen it you just need a burnish iron a burnisher you can just put a bit of a burr on them and they should be ready to go um, there are lots of tutorials on the internet uh, on how to sharpen and ma maintain uh, your cabinet scrapers or scraper cards yeah, really valuable tool uh, not expensive easy to use and you can use them I use them for a lot of different things like for example um, yeah, cleaning up this body If you want to do such a job yourself in your own builds or your own projects be sure the corner is as clean as you can get it it's very important if there's any bit of wood left in the utmost corner and you can't fit your inlay in properly So most of the times these scrapers are meant to be pushed but I've sharpened mine in a way and especially this one is meant to be pulled and I think that's easier pulling so I've cleaned up the bottom of the cavity we just routed it's nice and flat now even and now it's time to fit the top and because there are some slight tolerances in the copy rings and uh, yeah the templates it doesn't fit in one go it's just ever so slightly too big just a just a fraction of a millimeter too big luckily because I have such a small tolerance to work with to get an almost seamless or I hope so a seamless joint uh, between the top and the false binding of the body wood yeah I have to take a sand block and very gently sand down the edges until I got a nice fit uh, I also have to round over the sharp corners on the top uh, to match the radius of the uh, cavity of course because all the inside corners here have a quarter inch uh, diameter so an eighth of an inch radius and, uh, and these points on the top have to match that of course so yeah this is going to take me I think a couple of hours 
until I have a nice and perfect fit because I have to take it very and very slow. So I'm going to put it somewhat in a time lapse and I see you when I've got a nice fit and we're ready to glue the top into the body. I'm almost there, it's a really tight fit and, the, uh, and I can't really do a proper test fit because I have to squeeze it in and press it in and then I can't get it out anymore. So the, yeah, it just takes a leap of faith. Apply the glue and use two pieces. I use two old templates on the top of the bottom and a lot of uh, clamps and really press it in. And then I should end up with almost a seamless fit I hope it's like I said it's a bit of a leap of faith at the moment it looks great and it should fit but let's find out let's apply some glue so now I'm ready to glue the top to the body and yeah I know it can require a lot of force from the clamps to press in the top so I've got all kinds of extra supports, blocks of wood, a lot of clamps laying around so I can really press it in and yeah I, ca I can't re re so I can't redo this shot so it has to has to be first time right. If I screw this up it's done and I can redo the body. Let's not screw this up. something like this it helps with closing the possible gaps just a little but in the same time it swells the wood a little so it's harder to press the top in I think I'm there. Fingers crossed. I'm very, very, very nervous. Start shaking. already Goes. 
scary sound. And it pops in like that. There's a support here due to the control cavity. And there she goes. I wish I had one of these uh, book binders clamps. Oh, I'm sorry, my battery is empty, but I, I can't stop to switch it, so I'll be back when I've got it all clamped up. Yeah, it's the next day, and the last clip was a bit hectic. Uh, like I said, I always get nervous when I have to do this glue up, <laughs> and then the battery of the camera died, and I got double as nervous because I want to show you guys as much as possible but yeah you can't stop when doing a glue up like this you can't stop to switch camera batteries uh, and such so yeah i'm sorry if you uh, yeah didn't catch it all uh, because of the camera um, but we have a result the top is in it looks real good there's almost no gap visible just here and there but it might be that the top is slightly uh, yeah, tilting to one side or the, the, the sides weren't square enough and matching up and usually when I start carving usually the seam disappears and we can always repair some spots of course but yeah, yeah it looks great the only downside is I routed the cavity just it's just under a millimeter too deep so now I'm going to take my small little hand plane again and level the sides the edges and i think i'm going to use one of my sanding beams to make sure it's nice and flat yeah. before we can continue working on the rest of this guitar Yeah, it looks great. And the most important part, you want to be absolutely flat and straight and yeah, as precise as you can get it, is the central section of the body where the neck, the pickups and the bridge are going to be. Um, and for example, if you have a bit of bow in the top or a bit of a dip, uh, for example, exactly where you want to place your pickup rings, it keeps showing. Um, so from the earliest stage as possible, I try to keep this as level as I can. I know I have still a lot of sanding to do, but yeah, at this stage I can use a big level beam uh, with a coarse grit sandpaper just to get it yeah, as perfect as I can get it. Um, yeah, it makes it a lot easier um, at a later stage of building this guitar. This is where I'm going to leave it for this week's episode. I've got my body blank prepared and the next step is to route the neck pocket and to finish the neck. I need the neck fitted to this body so I can measure out the position of the Floyd Rose Tremolo bridge and the pickups and as soon as those pockets are routed I can start carving the rest of the body. So next week we'll be all getting this neck fitted into this body. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did and you learned something from it, please consider leaving a like and maybe you could consider subscribing to my channel to don't miss out on any of my future content. Yeah, um, yeah. I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, have a nice week.